I'll try to do a shorty right now, one of those, what does that mean type of videos or teachings. They give you food for thought and they give you our opinion on it. And this is on Ephesians 1, 3. Something that I, while I was in religion, I never really seen stopped over and focused on at all, ever. I'm sure so you can say it's taught a lot and you must have just missed it, Mark. But in religion, I never really seen anyone focus on this. I listened to a lot of religious radio, read a lot of religious books, not religious TV, but I believe me, I've seen literally thousands of services and heard thousands of teachings and taught many myself. I was never compelled to teach on this. But Ephesians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So I'm just going to kind of ask and hopefully partially answer, what does that mean? What, what can that possibly mean? He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. I'll take a stab at it here, if you bear with me. Well, first off, that word has, that's past tense. He's done it. He's not looking to do it. He's not waiting for you or I to accomplish some task or fulfill some commandment, so he will do it. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Now, I don't know what more you need besides all spiritual blessings, but I've come to the conclusion I don't need any more than all spiritual blessings. Peter put it a different way, he said, all things that pertain to life and godliness. You have it all. And that's the, the crux, that's the dividing line that my wife and I came to understand between the old and the dead and the dying, which is religion, and the new and the life and the life giving, which is life of Christ. And that is we already have everything. There's nothing that we need from him. It doesn't mean we don't ask for things in this world, for healings or for loved ones. And the main thing when we ask on behalf of others is that their eyes will be open and they would see they already have everything. Because whether you have physical gain or not, or any sort of material gain or not, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have nothing. It doesn't matter. So that's what we ask for more than anything. Our loved ones, they're healthy, they're sick, they're successful, they're unsuccessful. One lot more for them, more than anything for them, is for them to know that their God has given them everything. So that's what this means. It means literally, He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So now our life is not so much about asking and begging and pleading, but thanking. And just living in that thankfulness and having a thankful spirit. God, wow, you gave me everything. I have it all available to me. Do I receive all of it? No, I'm still growing. You're still maturing me. You're still teaching me. You're still comforting me and assuring me and showing me that I can trust in this. And day by day, I learn to receive the things that are already sitting there waiting for me. But this is real. This is a very powerful thing. You have all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So that's where your father lives. Your father lives in Christ and that's where you live with him. That's what that phrasing means or that that grammar means, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. He lived within that man. That man is, is in whom all the fullness of God dwells. And you dwell there with him. So you have all those things. So be happy about it. Don't be worried about losing it. He's not going to take it away. There's nowhere. You can search. I've searched it out. There's nowhere here in the Bible where it says he's going to take something away from you. God doesn't do that. He doesn't give and take. He only gives. But if you never take it, then you never have it. But once you receive it, it's yours. He says you'll never thirst again. He says you eat of this bread, you're never going to hunger again. Obviously, he's talking about something more substantive than your belly. And he says if you drink of it, the lady at the well. He says if you drink of this, you'll never thirst again. What did I hear for 10 years? Just keep drinking. Just keep getting fed. You're, you're one thirsty son of a gun, boy, you better get down here and get your fill. That's all I heard, and, and from what I can tell, most people in religion have the same thing. There's this waiting promise that they can get if they just execute the right things, if they just keep trying, if they just keep persevering. They're going to get that thing, hopefully, someday, or they'll get a taste of it, or they'll feel it for 15 minutes down at the altar, and it'll dissipate away throughout the week, and then come back and 
in our system there was a phrase of or the cliche of pray through you must pray through which is nowhere in the Bible what are you gonna pray through to get to receive again what you already been given no you got it rest in it that's what he wants for you he wants rest for you it says that in Hebrews 4 very clear he offers us rest and if you have faith in that then you will rest faith not religion, not denomination, not performance, not tithes and offerings, attendance or service or any of those things. Faith. And then you will rest like you've never rested before. Like my wife and I are. And we have, like I say, we still have struggles, but it's a contentment and a rest like we've never had before. It's amazing because we know we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies with Christ because we're with Him. And that's all there is to it. In Jesus' name, Amen.